Hey guys. All right, so right now we're gonna do completing the square. This is a more complicated completing the square. It has a lot of the fractions in it so that I can show you the different shortcuts and how completing the square ideally is supposed to work. Uh, a lot of the ones without the fractions, we tend to not show you the shortcuts because we need to make sure you know how to factor and such. But once you get fractions in the middle, the factoring just becomes crazy. And so with the fractions, you can see why we complete the square and why it's so vital to where these fractions are and you can't factor easily with the fractions, completing the square comes in extremely handy. I mean, it's ultimate purpose. Uh, it can be said to be for circles, to complete the square to get the standard form of a circle. But this is another place where it comes in really nice and handy. The problem with completing the square is this really long pain in the butt process and it seems really random until you go to a certain point and you're like, oh, okay, that might be why we're doing this pain in the butt process. But it's really hard to remember the process. It's really hard to keep up with the process and to make sure you have it unless you get, to make sure you get it all well if you don't have enough practice. Completing the square is not something you can do one or two or three of and expect to have it down perfectly. You need to do like six, seven, eight of them to be able to get that practice done well. It's just like anytime you start a new job, you're given this whole long list of things that you've got to do in this crazy format. And it takes some while to get it down. You've got to do it five or six, seven, eight times before you're like, okay, I finally have this process down. Then the more you do it, the more you're like, oh, I could make it more efficient by doing this. And I could do this. And that would help save me a lot of steps. And so, but every once in a while, you've got to go back to that crazy process. So that's kind of what completing the square is. That's how it's preparing us for the real world. Is sometimes we're gonna have crazy processes that we're gonna have to figure out how to deal with. So your first step in completing the square, step one, is move the constant to the right. So we are going to add one. My problem is written incorrectly, and it's equal sign. You can do completing the square without an equal sign, uh, but again, in my class, my videos right now are targeted towards college algebra. Uh, and so at this point, for at least on their task, my classes have it with an equal sign. Once you get into different classes, they may do it without an equal sign. It changes the process a little bit, but for my purposes right now, for what I need to do for my students, uh, we're gonna do it with, with an equal sign. Okay. So that is going to give us 4x squared plus 3x equals 1. Step 2, I don't know how well this marker is going to work. Not at all. Step 2, we are going to divide all terms. by a. Okay, so a is 4, so whatever number is in front of x squared. It's going to give us x squared plus 3 fourths x equals 1 fourth. Okay. Step 3 is where it gets really weird. So step 3. Start by identifying B. So now our B is a fraction, and that's what makes this one a little bit more complicated than the other, not a, a lot more complicated than the other ones without fractions. So B is three divided by four. Now for the second part of step three, I get the same directions whether B is a fraction or not. I tell you to multiply it by one half. And a lot of my students, when it's not a fraction, they get frustrated. They're like, why don't we just divide by two? And I tell them that when there's a fraction, multiplying by one half is a whole lot easier than dividing by two. Because for most of us, we're not completely comfortable with fractions. And unless we really understand how the fractions work and how our calculator thinks about fractions, dividing fractions is a whole lot difficult to put in, a whole lot more difficult to put into our calculators. And so if you're multiplying fractions, things don't have the issues. So I always tell them to multiply it by one half. So that's gonna give us three fourths 
times one half. And you can just type that straight into the calculator. There won't be an order of operations problem. Three divided by four times one divided by two gives us 0.375. If you have a TI 83 or four, you press math enter enter, it will turn it back into a fraction of three eighths. Keep these things in fractions. Decimals we tend to not like because sometimes they get rounded and then they're not exact. Fractions should always be exact, so keep them in fractions. But you're not actually working with the fractions. The calculator is the one working with the fractions. Okay, so once we multiply it by one half, we're then going to square it. It's going to give us 9 over 64. Okay, it seems really random, but so does everything else we ever do that takes a long process. Until we actually get playing with it quite a bit, seven, eight, nine times, uh, it's going to seem extremely random until you get that process memorized. Again, you can't expect to just watch your instructor or watch this video and have it down perfectly. You've got to put the practice into it. Okay, once you square it, we're going to add it to both sides. to both sides it's not equivalent so we've got to make sure it gets added to both this math over here use your calculator so we can go back to our calculator we have 1 divided by 4 plus 9 divided by 64 I get a long decimal I'm gonna do math enter enter on my TI I get 25 64 that number is going to be really nice. Okay. For the other side, we need to factor the left. That is going to be terrible and horrible and miserable to factor which is why one of my students sent me this problem and said, can you please make a video lecture for us? It's because of that factoring right there. So this is where completing the square is awesome and amazing. And the whole point for this step three was to make this one into a perfect square trinomial. Now it's not gonna be a perfect square trinomial if you have the numbers up front. So that's why we had to make sure we divided everything by A. We had to move the constant to make sure we could add that extra number that would make it a perfect square trinomial. And what that means is in one instance, if this is all done correctly, as long as there are no mistakes, it will always, always, always factor to your variable plus or minus the number before you squared it, which is technically one half times B squared. Always. Long as the math is done correctly, long as step three is done correctly, it will come out to X plus or minus half of B. So half of B for us was 3 eighths. Since 3 eighths is positive, eighths. So that brings up another point. If your B happens to be negative, if it were negative, you would have to keep that negative. That way it makes sure you get the same right sign over here. Always going to be squared. That's going to equal this down here. So I'm going to rewrite it so it's all the same level. X plus 3 eighths squared equals 25 over 64. Okay. Your next step, we have something squared equals 25, 64. If you wrote that twice and foiled it, you would be going right back up to here. And we really don't want to deal with that. The whole point for completing the square is to make this something squared 
so that we can then use the square root property to get access to x. We want to be able to get to the x. So what the square root property says, if one side of your equation is entirely squared, something in parentheses squared, then you can square root both sides as long as you don't forget your plus and minus on that one side that's not canceling away. So we're going to do square root property. Don't forget. The plus and minus. So if I square root this side, those are going to go away. What I do to one side, I must do to the other. But on this side, where it's not meant to go away, you're going to add the plus and minus. You can't forget that plus and minus. It goes right in front of the square root. You should only have one square root on each side. What that's going to give us, I'm going to move it up here, the x plus 3 eighths is now outside of the parentheses. Here we're going to do plus and minus the square root of 25 divided by the square root of 64. And that's really convenient that those are nice pretty numbers. They are nice whole perfect squares. If they weren't, you would have to end up rationalizing it to make sure there's no radicals in the denominator. But it's really nice that those are good. So we have x plus 3 eighths equals plus or minus 5 eighths. I don't know why I put 5 fifths. Can't talk and write at the same time. 5 eighths. Okay, which will make it a lot easier because now the denominators are the same, which wouldn't have mattered because I'm still going to use my calculator to do the math. We want to make sure, especially on a test, you're extremely stressed. It's extremely easy to accidentally do the math wrong. Let your calculator take the stress. You need to be focused on the concept, not the arithmetic. Let your calculator take the arithmetic for you. Okay, so then to solve for x, so that's our next step. I am officially out of colors. So I'm going to go back, I think green wrote well. Step six, solve for x over here. So minus three eighths, minus three eighths. Problem now, so what is plus or minus five eighths minus three eighths? There's two separate answers. So I'm gonna put the one without the plus or minus first plus or minus 5 eighths. And in order to solve this out, we are going to have to break this into two separate equations. Our highest exponent was a 2. The very beginning, that means we should have two answers. Because there are no radicals, no imaginaries, nothing that would keep us from combining them in our calculator, you're going to make one that's a plus, Negative 3 eighths will stay negative. This is just going to choose the plus sign. 5 divided by 8. And you're going to make one that's a negative. Negative 3 eighths. That's going to choose the minus sign. Okay. Grab our calculator so we can do the math. So I'm going to do the first one. I have negative 3 divided by 8 plus 5 divided by 8, math enter enter, that gives me 1 fourth. Over here I have negative 3 divided by 8, minus 5 divided by 8, math enter enter, it was negative 1 anyway. There's your two answers. So that shows you a completing a square with the entire process. The process does not change whether it came out to a pretty number or it came out to a fraction. Still the same process. If this did not come out to perfect squares, you would have to end up rationalizing. Um, but there's your completing the square. Long, horrible, pain in the butt. We only do completing the square when we have to do completing the square. Just like any process that's the official by the book process, we tend to only do it when we have to do it.
but there are those occasions we have to do the longer process. Uh, circles is a very good example of those. When you get to writing the standard equation of a circle, uh, that's a very good example of where you're going to need completing the square.